Tragedies like the one occurring in the Ukraine right now are why nonprofits exist. Whether your organization was created to respond to tragedies or whether you're just making an impact during a tragedy, this video is for you. Learn how fundraising and marketing can be an important component during any difficult situation. Stay tuned. Forest fires are a common occurrence in the San Bernardino, California mountains, and most residents are used to hearing about property destroyed by fire. But one fire was different from the others. On November 24, 1980, the Great Panorama Fire started as a wildfire set by an unknown arsonist near Panorama Point. The fire was not 100% contained until December 1, 1980. The fire's growth was exacerbated by 90 mile per hour Santa Ana winds, which pushed the flames into populated areas in Waterman Canyon and the city of San Bernardino. 325 structures were destroyed, including 310 homes. Some of those structures were office buildings located on the property of the nonprofit where I worked. Four San Bernardino residents died, but thankfully none of our staff. However, some of our staff lost their homes. We sent letters to donors asking for assistance as quickly as we could for the 1980s. Direct mail letters went to more than 100,000 donors within 10 to 14 days of the tragedy, and all major donors were called. Our most faithful financial partners stepped up like never before and met the challenge. That was a devastating time for our organization. However, you never know about the true resiliency of the human spirit until that spirit is tested under trial. Many nonprofit organizations and leaders face tragedies every day or serve an audience that's facing a tragedy, just like many individuals facing tragedy today in the Ukraine. We're at the very beginning of a major crisis in Europe and really don't know all the fallout that will result. There is already significant loss of life during combat and there are families torn apart as many refugees flee this nation. Early estimates are that 18 million people will likely be affected and more than 7 million will have to flee their homes. Relief agencies have already sprung into action providing food, water, clothing, and other supplies and countless more agencies will aid the refugees with repopulation. Some nonprofits deal with crisis as part of their mission. Others come to an aid of those in need, even if it isn't what they normally do. But what if your nonprofit is watching from a distance? How do you properly engage with donors in a time like this? Let's dive into some practical action steps, ways nonprofit leaders and organizations can respond to crisis situations, either internally or externally. Action step number one, assess the damage and impact to your audience. Before stepping in, it's important to assess the damage and impact that your audience or your organization has sustained. Experts should be used to determine the extent of damage of buildings, structures, equipment, and of course, displacement, loss of lives, or at least injuries. Determining priority needs is critical. Find out areas that need the most attention and what needs to be done quickly and what can be done a little later. The total cost of the need, even if it is simply the initial cost, will be helpful in establishing a fundraising and marketing strategy. Action step number two. Since tragedies happen quickly and there often isn't even time to think, a crisis management team should immediately be mobilized and deployed to the tragedy. Secondary teams should be mobilized as quickly as possible. Organizational help is typically in the areas of evacuation, assistance, recovery services, security, provision of supplies, temporary shelter, damage assessment, and restoration of infrastructure. Costs to perform all these should be clearly defined and possibly delineated if they are going to be used in direct marketing campaigns or in meetings with donors. Action step number three, determine a marketing and mobilization strategy. In addition to the specific funding needs just mentioned, disasters require human resources, both from within the organization, staff, and outside the organization, volunteers. Plans need to be developed to mobilize staff and volunteers to serve in key roles determined by the disaster plan. A great way to ready volunteers is through the marketing and mobilization strategy, properly informing, recruiting, and utilizing people and money. You need to inform your donors about opportunities to be involved with their time, their talent, and their treasure. 
Be specific, locations, days, and times to serve are critical. So are ways to give and how exactly the money is used. You can disseminate this information both electronically and via mail, and even in some cases using other mediums such as radio and television. Action step number four, implement the strategy. This is where we go from planning to implementation. Money and human resources should be deployed to the areas of greatest need. Time is of the essence in a moment of crisis. And that means waiting for letters to be produced in mails shouldn't be the first response like it was in our situation with the panorama fires in the 1980s. Direct marketing must be deployed quickly in ways to give electronically employed as a first line of defense. Even text to give options should be employed. Top donors, the critical few, should be immediately called and, when possible, met face-to-face -to, -face to secure the largest gift possible. Action step number five, assess how long it will take to solve the problem. This is important because fundraising and marketing efforts will likely need to continue throughout the entire time of the tragedy and possibly for years after. Realistic expectations must be established with both workers, volunteers, and with donors. People tend to respond quickly in most cases with sacrifices of time and money, but enthusiasm wanes the longer a tragedy lasts. It's important not to burn out your most valuable resources too fast and for too long. Seek credible, trained experts who can assess the situation honestly. Action step number six. After the tragedy, your effectiveness. An after-action report should be developed that assesses the organization's ability to do their job or how effective they were at meeting the needs of those affected by the tragedy. Strengths and weaknesses should be determined in great detail, and that should include the speed and effectiveness of the marketing and fundraising efforts. Tracking how quickly letters and emails and other marketing pieces were written, sent, and received in homes is critical as the response rate, amount committed, and given, and demographics of the audience that responded is important. Also, if rented lists were used, tracking of results from those lists is vital. If large gifts were given, it might be nice to send reports of how the gifts were used, including not only testimonials, but the greater impact gained through larger gifts. Responding to tragedies such as the war occurring in the Ukraine or even natural disasters happening all over the U.S. and the world is so important. And how your organization responds is critical and you must move quickly. The internet has opened up our world to immediate marketing and solicitation and allowed tragedies to be shared with more people than ever before. And that means the more people can give to your organization than ever before. Tragedies should never be exploited for financial gain, but when they happen, they open the doors for you to share the mission of your organization and share the best of what you do. Whether your explicit mission is to aid in a time of tragedy is irrelevant. You can use social media tools to speak into current events with your organization's unique perspective. To me, this is not exploitation, but actually a great way to show you care. Use fundraising and marketing to make a difference not only locally or throughout the U.S., but worldwide. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button and add a comment below if you got some good ideas about how to respond to a tragedy. Hey, would you do me a quick favor? To let me know you got this far in the video, type the word tragedy in the comments section. It's an exercise that will help me find out if this kept your attention. If you're interested in joining me and making a difference in our world and even for eternity, please hit the subscribe button and click the all bell to be notified when the next video is released. If you want to find out how to connect better with donors, watch this video and raise more money than ever before. I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.